I guess you, you take a position where you, you try to, you know, balance the, the covenants, you know, because, the, you know, I, and I've heard other people try to do this because they really do want to honor God by trying to, um, you know, keep the, the, the entirety of the Bible. And in, and in this case, you know, it, this is like, you know, the covenants. So people are looking at, you know, all the covenants and seeing, you know, which ones, you know, apply to them and things like that. Um, but, you know, the, 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 and the thing that, you know, I would really, you know, just kind of challenge you on is to, to see one thing, and that is this, um, you know, you, you have your own standard, you know, which is, you know, discretion. And, and then there's, you know, God's standard, you know, basically the way that God um, has been doing things, and w which is very clear throughout the Bible. You know, because th this whole thing has to do with patterns and patterns have to do with symbols. Right. And symbols have meaning. So God, you know, does things with these, these certain meanings. And so, you know, if, if that's the case, then, you know, based on that standard, I just have, you know, just a few questions. You know, question number one. Um, you know. Is Jacob and Abraham you know, since we're talking about God is going to judge and recording all these covenants, right? So is, is is Jacob and Abraham going to be, you know, judged by God uh, under, you know, the law of Moses or under the, the covenant that God made with them? Is that question for me or for Max? No, no, that question's for you. Um. Uh. I believe that Abraham and Jacob are going to be judged by the covenant that they already had established. But um, with that, that's a little tricky, tricky because uh, it seems like with these covenant, a little bit more knowledge of the Most High's will uh, was, was revealed to them. So Abraham's not going to be judged because he married his half-sister and the law that is condemned. But just because we are in a specific covenant now doesn't mean that if someone marries their half sister, they're not going to be judged by that same standard. Each, with each covenant, the standard of holiness and righteousness kind of increases because the Lord reveals more of His world. So, right, and this also includes Jacob. You know, when he married, you know, yeah, yeah, his sister. Yeah. His, I mean, he married not his sister, but right, he married. Yeah white sister so sister. What you're saying is is yeah. it, it kind of what you're saying is it, it, it kind of builds as god goes so there's no such thing as like a you know a cutoff point or a hey i'm just going to do something totally different um i guess what, what you're saying is there's no such thing as that you know so in terms of you know uh jacob and abraham you know, th that that only works for, for them in terms of, you know, what, what God dealt with them because he's not going to judge them, you know, in, in a covenant that he never even, you know, started with them or, or, or put on them, you know. So I, I could definitely see what you mean. So I, I guess, you know, my, my next question is, is that um, if, if, you, if you believe that, you know, you, you do – have to go ahead and and keep you know you know every covenant that God has has made up to this point to the best of your ability. Then you know my my next question would be is is that um how how do you yeah how, why is it that that your definition uh, and 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 view of covenant is is radically different from from how God defines specifically this new covenant here. Cause um, you know, it, it's one thing to say, well, every covenant that God made, it, it's still perpetual. It's still going on. And the new covenant is just along for the ride. And, you know, th that, that would be awesome if, if I could see Jesus and the apostles talking like that, especially throughout all their wonderful examples. But, you know, the, the issue is, is that, you know, when, when, when you start with the new covenant, it, it's, it's defined by God differently. 
and and it's explained by Christ and the disciples differently throughout their examples. Um, so my, my question is, how can you say that you know the, the, these covenants that got started, uh, they 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 never um, they never quite really ended with the new covenant, despite the fact that you know that God clearly said that you know that he would not only do a new covenant but it, it would not be according to or based on the old covenant you know the covenant that you know he had made with the, his our, our fathers that, that uh you know went throughout the, the wilderness um he took them out of, of egypt you know i was wondering how, how is it that you you see that when when the Bible kind of it pretty much speaks a little differently than, than how you're defining it. Okay, so I would disagree that the Bible speaks differently about how uh, I wouldn't even say how I'm defining it. Um, I think the problem here is a lack of understanding, a lack of understanding what the scriptures are. Uh, now, neither myself nor Max make any boast of being some great Hebrew scholar or some theologian that the Lord reveals things to the babe and to those who seek him with a pure heart. Um, and that's kind of what we stand for. We, we trust the revelation that God gives us and not so much what, what man tries to teach us because we know that man is corrupt. Uh, but when people talk about the law, uh, they make it seem like it's just this so this grievous thing. Or you're trying so hard to keep all these commandments, and it's like if you want to be right with God, don't you try diligently not to tell lies? God, as a man, don't you diligently try not to look upon a woman and lust after her, because you want to be right with God. Now we know that we're saved by faith, but there are certain things outlined in the Scripture that God is not pleased with. And so lest we fail the grace of God, we have to make sure that we are keeping his commandments, uh, that we are repenting daily if, need, uh, if needed. So I don't, I don't like how people set up the argument uh, that keeping the law is just this bondage and it's just a terrible thing and you're trying to enslave everybody again. Uh, and that's not really the mindset or the heart that we should have behind it. We should be doing it in faith and keeping it according to the second thing you said, I actually forgot. You asked, do you mind if repeating kind of like the last half of what you said, like really briefly? Um, sure. Yeah, I think, right now. Sure, that's fine. I think, I think the other thing that I said was, is that w when you look at uh, the parables of Jesus, who, who, who taught. Oh, right. And when you look at, you know, the disciples teachings themselves, um, all their examples of what they're, they're, you know, trying their best to be very clear about seem to, to have a whole bunch of examples that, you know, speak directly in line with, you know, how the new covenant is defined, how it's not anything that, um, you know, you, you don't find this theme of, uh, this ever building covenants upon covenants upon covenants. Uh, but instead you kind of find this thing where throughout all the parables and the teachings of the apostles and their examples, you know, I can go to Romans seven, all kinds where you keep finding that, Hey, in the old covenant, it was this way, but now, now that Christ has come, it is, it is now this new thing. And, and now it is this way. Um, Right. Uh, why is it that I don't find a theme of building, uh, but but I do find a theme of of newness, and in this newness, there's this fulfillment, e even of the old. Mm -hmm. So when you when you say that Christ came to fulfill the law, uh, what you mean by the word fulfill is. When no, I, say I that, when the Lord Jesus. Right. No, I don't. I don't. I don't mean that. You know, because uh, because Christ said that He does not come to destroy but to fulfill, and and really, you know, what that means is, you know, you, you can't fulfill something uh, by destroying it. So, for example, 
you know, I, I can't fill a cup up if, if I just go to knock the cup over and the glass goes everywhere. No, I, I have to fill that cup up. And now, now that I've filled that cup up, you know, now all of a sudden, you know, th there's nothing more that can be added to the cup. You know, that, that's what that fulfillment means. Now, now later on, you know, you, you have the apostles and, and even, even Jesus himself, when he's talking about his own body, where they talk about um, that there is this, this removal or this abolishment of all these other things because of the fulfillment of this one thing that needed to be fulfilled for so long, which is the law. You know, so that, that that's the real perspective of that, you know, um, and I think a lot of times people, they, they kind of miss that, you know. Um, again, I disagree. Because, okay, okay so you mentioned um, the first time I, I remembered you mentioned about the new covenant, why I still believe that certain aspects, why I still believe that certain aspects of the Old Covenant were supposed to be continued in. Um, well, you, you went to Jeremiah 31, right? In the New Covenant, not according to the covenant that I made beforehand. This is something that Mac and I have brought up again and again, and I don't think that we've ever really gotten an answer. Um, but when you actually go to that place in Jeremiah 31, um, among other places, you know, the Lord promises very specific things to a specific people, and he calls that the new covenant. Jesus Christ came, came but there are still promises that, that the Lord has not fulfilled. The new covenant, that doesn't mean that those old promises he's no longer going to do. He, he has to do those things. He's a righteous God. He has to fulfill his promises. He says in him fulfilling those promises, that in itself is the new covenant. So if you're saying, we're in the new covenant, why are you worried about keeping peace with not Worried about the dietary law. Uh, well, it's because I don't agree with your definition of the new covenant. I go about exactly what the scripture says and defines the new covenant to be. And there are certain things pertaining to the new covenant that has not been fulfilled yet. That's just bottom line that I kind of want to point out is Colossians chapter 2. I can't think of the verse, but it's the verse. It's a popular verse. Everybody knows it. Um, let no one judge you in meat or in holy days, for these things are shadow of things to come. And I feel like people use that verse wrong or they, they, don't, really, they don't really catch what it's saying uh, because one, it says that these things are a thing, are uh, a shadow of things to come. So are, meaning it is currently a shadow of something that will future tense come. So that means that at that particular point in time, when Paul was writing that letter, they were still keeping these things. They were still observing these things because they are, not were, as in past tense, they were all fulfilled in the first coming of Christ. No, they are a shadow of the come. So I hope uh, I answered everything that you said. If I forgot something, if I missed something, you know. Please um, don't. You didn't miss um, it. Um, I, oh. Okay. I'm sorry, one second. Uh, so, uh, I don't think Sister Cherry's going to come back because she's at work still. So uh, I don't know if she's going to be able okay. to return tonight. Uh, she mm -hmm. said she might reschedule the one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, Justin, for another day. But uh, we can continue to cool do this. That. But I'm going to allow Mac. Yeah, I'm gonna allow Mac okay. to jump into the conversation if he wants now because um be here then and then uh then it's okay for Mac to, I, I guess to get involved now. So go ahead, Sarah. Oh yeah, so so yeah, I mean you, you didn't miss miss anything at all. You know, I just wanted to just, you know, make some observations and you know, just uh just point some other things out. First thing I noticed was uh, you know, you you said that uh, you know, when it comes to the word of God um, you know, sometimes there, there are certain people that just don't understand it. And, and, uh, you know, and, and you said this to me before, you know, you said, you know, there are certain people that, you know, Hey, God just hasn't really 
you know, revealed that understanding to you and, and, you know, you, you had the understanding that you had. And, and to that, I say, you know, I, I, well, that's just really convenient to say. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't have anything uh, against that really, except for, well, actually, yeah, I do. <laughs> um, for one, like I said, that, that's, that's very convenient to say. I mean, I hear what you're saying, but, but once again, you know, this, this goes, you know, if, 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 if you're going to go ahead and take that route, then, you know, this goes against, you know, what, what the New Testament reveals. You know, you, you have Jesus promising the disciples, you know, which is basically collectively the church when you end up, you know, ex when you end up extending that to the people they wrote to, is that he said, listen, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you into all truth. And also he said that the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance everything that I've taught you. You know, now, of course, uh, there's all kinds of ways that the disciples have taught those things. And it wasn't just all through the written word. It was through practice as well. This gets into some other stuff that I don't want to get into right now. But I'm, I'm just trying to get you to, to just kind of re-examine certain scriptures that, that pop out uh, pretty much against what, you know, what you, what, what you say, you know, Jesus said things like, you know, Hey, I will be with you even into the end of the age. I will not leave you orphans. You know, this is a promise to the church. So now he's promising that not only will the Holy Spirit guide you in all truth and all these other things, uh, but he's saying, look, I'm going to be with you to the end. I'm not going anywhere. And that this is a promise that Christ made to the church so when you say that well Matt you just don't understand well who, who is the arbiter of that because God has left a clear promise that there is a way that you actually can understand and that is actually through you know the word that he gave to the apostles i.e the church you have the scriptures here you know and you have people that have been handed down that authority to teach um, you have all those things going on, and, and um, it seems that if someone was able to easily say, well, you know what, bro, yeah, you're in the church, you love the Lord, you've been baptized, you know, you're not perfect, but you follow hard after God, uh, but God just didn't reveal it to you. It, it kind of just goes against, like, well, well, man, like, I guess God's promise that he left it, it just either a he didn't promise it to me it kind of skipped over me but it didn't skip over the church that i'm a part of you know but, but it, 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 it skipped over me and yeah so it just kind of makes all these these funny ways and you know you go back to the first century and i don't i don't think that the apostles would say something like that you know but another thing that, that you said was um you know you said to basically because Christ, because God had you know has these kind of promises that He will fulfill, and um, you, you said this for the old covenant and new covenant, you know you said well um, that means that that you know that that covenant isn't really done away with because those promises have to be fulfilled, and you know this gets into you know something that we spoke about before about prophecy and. I tried to explain to you as much as I could about how prophecy is not limited to any covenant. God could promise something. God could prophesy something in the old covenant. And he could, you know, fulfill that promise in a new covenant. <laughs> you know, he, he can do that if he wants to. You know, and I'm pretty sure he has. You know, just look at Jesus. You know, you got a prophet saying, that, hey, um, um, but... Another thing was, um, I believe you said something along the lines of, uh, you said something about the examples that about, you know, Colossians and, you know, being under meats and, and drinks and those kind of things. Oh, no, no, that, that's why I remember now. You said something about we Christians try to make it look like that the law is so hard to keep. And, and then after that, you said, hey, you know, is it so hard? To, you know, what's so wrong or, or hard about? not lying or not committing adultery. And, and I found it that interesting that the, every example that you named were moral things. 
and and you know I kind of I kind of hinted at this before, but I never really I never really pushed full throttle with it uh, about those moral things, you know, and that gets into once again the moral law, which existed before any law. Why? Because you know the moral law is just the character of God Himself. You know, we're merciful because God is merciful, right? We're loving because God is loving. Like those are His His characteristics, right? which is uh, embedded in us through our conscience. You know, just read Romans 1, 2, and 3. Um, it's, it's just pretty simple. And uh, so, yeah, the, the, when you talk about the things that keep, I don't have any problem keeping the moral aspect of the law. But, um, yeah, when it comes to ceremonial things, those are symbolic, which were fulfilled in Christ. But when you mention Colossians chapter 2, you know, I can understand what you mean when you say, you know, Hey, look, the present tense. Oh. oh, did someone say something? Okay, well, yeah, I was trying to cut in because I want to ask. I want to ask a question. But go ahead. Okay, all right. Well, I'm, I'm almost done. You know, I just shot to respond to everything. But anyway, so the, the last thing was, um, you know, when you look at that passage, yeah, I mean, sometimes people can be grammatically right, but yet just exegetically wrong. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. Like, yeah, I mean, it does say uh, a shadow of things w w which are to come, right? Or a shadow of things come or, or it says something like that. But then when you read it further along, it says, but the substance, right? The, the, the thing itself, the substance is Christ. And so what you have to ask yourself is, has Christ come? You know, did he actually manifest? Did God become a man? Was he born of a virgin? Did he walk in flesh? Did God, did, did Christ come? And the fact is, yes, he, he did. You know, um, and, and so because of that, when it says, let no one judge you in meat or drink, that does not mean that people are judging them uh, because they are keeping the the those sabbath things and 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 doing the clean and unclean that wouldn't make sense because for one these people are gentiles and so why would the jews judge them on keeping the law hey you guys are doing stuff and, and uh uh you guys are abstaining from unclean meats let no one judge you in meat or drink let's see it doesn't make sense now it would make sense if you know they weren't doing those things, it would make sense if if they weren't uh, keeping the Sabbath and all that. Then all of a sudden, who are these judges? Who are these accusers? Well, they're the same people in Acts 15. They're the Judaizers, you know, the same ones where they were given that law where it says, "Listen, just make sure you don't eat meat with blood in it." Now, if they really wanted them to keep the law, they would have just said, listen, abstain from unclean meats, period. But they didn't do that. The reason why is because they're just saying, listen, you guys are living around the Jews, so just make sure that you don't eat any meat with blood. N Notice that that was the route. The route was not the entire law itself. Why? Because of the law of liberty. Law of liberty says, listen, I'll go ahead and uh, keep these, these, you know, things that Jews want me to keep because they're the covenant of Moses, but I'm doing it because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be not offensive, right? Just like Jesus taught. Uh, and at the same time, just because I'm keeping these things doesn't mean I'm under the law. Why? Because of the law of liberty. The same thing that Paul taught. He said, listen, I, I do these things, but well, I'm not under them. I mean, that, that's all I wanted to say. I could have said more, but I don't, I didn't want to be too long. Yeah, um...